gentlemen, and all four of you ladies watching this video, welcome to another Pack Daddy Mock Draft. This is round three of Draft 11. That's what the 11.3 thing means. Meaning, if you haven't seen round one or round two, be sure to check those out first, um, unless you're just really interested in a round three uh, draft. But if that's the case, just make sure you understand a lot of trades have taken place, so the order is not going to be in the way that you feel it should be. Does that make sense? This mock draft was not done by me, as you know, because you've watched video one and two. It was done by the Facebook community if you want to get involved. And by the way, right now they're doing another mock draft. It's actually very cool. It's a 2017 and 2018 mock draft. It's a combined thing. So you get to pick between the 2017 draft class and the 2018 draft class. It's a redraft of 2017 using those uh, two draft classes. It's actually really cool. I wish I had thought of it. But I guess it doesn't matter because the mock draft community came up with it. And I'm definitely planning on making a video out of it because I think that's very, very cool. If you want to get in on it, I think they only got two rounds in. So uh, be sure to uh, check the comments. Or excuse, Why do I keep calling it the comments? It's the description. Get in the description. And I have a lot of links in there. So get in the Facebook community. By the way, as of this morning, we just surpassed 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so very much. It was a very good morning. It makes waking up at stupid hours on a Saturday so much more sweet. Um, and hopefully by the time, uh, this day is out, well, what am I talking about? By the time this gets up, of course, two has been up, but by this recording, it's not up yet. So it's a personal goal that you don't need to worry about. And I didn't need to say out loud. Let's get started with the 65th pick in the 2018 NFL draft. The Cleveland Browns select Tyrell Crosby, offensive tackle, Oregon. So I like the methodical nature that uh, Andrew is, is doing with the Browns. And the, the one cool thing about this particular draft is he decided, uh, Keelan, he's the one that kind of runs all this stuff in the Facebook group, he decided, you know what, everybody gets to pick a team. So it's not it's not uh, one guy picks for this pick. That's the way I used to do it. But the cool thing about this is you can have a whole draft philosophy, right? You can say, I want to do this early and then do this later. And you can kind of have a, a direction. Otherwise, it just kind of gets chaotic. But they've they got Saquon, who I think is a good pick because when you have a guy on a on a particular tier uh, that's above everybody else, you got to take him. Then they went and got their quarterback. They got an edge rusher. They got a cornerback to help out. Uh, I know they have a decent offensive line, but you got to keep these things up and fresh, man. Uh, you know, a, a hurt left tackle is going to hurt your team quite a bit, and the Browns know exactly what that's about. Um, so. You've got a good offensive line, but offensive line is so important. You got to make sure that you have depth. You got to make sure that when you finally do move on with some of these other guys, you got somebody that can just step in. Boom, we're good to go. Especially now that we got a running back, we got a quarterback. That offensive line needs to be clicking. In terms of value, I have Tyrell Crosby at 82, so I should hate this pick. However, um, hearing a lot of good stuff about Tyrell Crosby, um, I think he is sliding up the board a little bit. Uh, I have to update. I think as I continue to update things, you're going to see a lot of mobility, especially with Ty Bell, Tyrell Crosby moving upward. I don't know if 65 is a good spot. That might still be a little ambitious, but I don't hate the pick because I'm hearing his name a lot. I think he's going to slide up. I think it's a good, uh, a good positional pick, so I'm good with it. I'm good with that. With the 66th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons and Deck select Braden Smith, guard, Auburn. So if you're confused why they're picking here, this was from a round one trade. I hated the trade with a passion. I gave him so much crap for it. He traded way up to round two. He gave up um, Devontae Freeman, and he got Minka Fitzpatrick. But here's the thing. He got pick two and this pick. He got Minka Fitzpatrick, then in round two he traded back into the round and he got Taven Bryan, who was a steal, and after that I'm thinking, man, that was a pretty good trade. I like that trade. Um, you know, he's trading kind of crazy time here, but uh, Taven Bryan was a steal at pick 50. Now with this pick he gets Braden Smith at guard. I have Braden Smith right now ranked 48th overall. This is pick 66. That's another steal. He got Minka Fitzpatrick. He got Taven Bryan at an unbelievable value. I have him like basically a first round grade and he got a mid second round. And now at the early um, third round grade, I have a, a 48 value, which is a mid second round grade on him. He's just killing it right now. I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm still, 
iffy on that trade, but dude, you got Minka, you got Taven Bryan, and now you got Braden Smith at guard. That's crazy, man. As much as I look at this and I say, okay, why would you get Minka Fitzpatrick? The guy's a freak. So, you know, you got Trufant, you got Alford, you got Allen O'Neill at safety. You know, I, I don't know where you put him, but you're going to upgrade somewhere with him. Then you get uh, another guy that's a great value that, you know, I don't know exactly where he goes, but they're looking to move on from Poe. You know, I again, these are great picks, but I'm not sure where you'd put them, what you do with them. But this pick, they need a guard, and they got a good one, and they got it from that trade. So this this is, they got Minka, and they got a guard of need at an amazing value, and they got it uh, for giving away their running back. And I don't think they should have given him up. But, uh, you know, some, some light at the end of the tunnel. At least he's making good moves. These are high-value players in really good spots. Um, what you do with them as a Falcons fan, you might look at it and go, we don't need them, we don't want them, whatever. But uh, there's going to be some point where Minka Fitzpatrick, Taven Bryan, and Braden Smith are going to be, I mean, you're going to look back on this draft and go, wow, that was an amazing draft. With the 67th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Justin and the Colts select Ronald Jones running back USC. This is just a phenomenal start to the draft. I'm so happy. Round two didn't get off to the best start, I didn't think. I saw a lot of reaching. I'm sure we'll see some of that, but this this is a... Ronald Jones, I have ranked 39th overall. There are some people saying he's the second best running back in this draft class. They need a running back. They waited until round three, and they got a guy that's like an early second round, possibly late first round guy. I don't think it's realistic he lasts this long, but you want to talk about a solid draft. And by the way, you're adding to Bradley Chubb and Ronnie Harrison, um, two very, very good football players. I mean, we, we haven't even gotten into... I, I think Ronald Jones is a better value than, than Ronnie Harrison. Um, but it, no, just phenomenal pick. There's nothing, nothing, nothing at all to dislike about this pick. There's nothing to even say about it. I mean, it's just a phenomenal value, a need, third-round pick. Just beautiful, beautiful. With the 68th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Texans making their first selection of the draft select Quentin Meeks, cornerback, Stanford. So... Little nitpicky, but I have him ranked 90th. I know that seems like it's a huge reach, but 90th is third round, right? We will get to pick 90 today. Um, it's a position of need, in my opinion, absolutely. I think offensive line is more important, but you, you got to kind of look at it and say, who do you think is the best value? Would not have been my pick. I think there's a lot of better picks. There's probably better corners, probably better linemen, probably better positions and players out there. Um, but... You know, we're getting, again, I said nitpicky, right? It's There's no reason why a third-round guy can't be an early third round as opposed to a late third round. It's preference. We're still a little early into this. Uh, also, I'm significantly less grumpy than yesterday, I'm noticing. <laughs> I hated everything yesterday. If you reached by, like, 15 moves, I was just yelling at you. No, but it's, I don't, I don't care for the pick oh, a ton because there's still second-round value out there. But, um, you know... Quentin, I don't, th- I don't think anyone's gonna look at this, and you know, it's not like a seventh round guy you're ridiculously reaching on. So, it is what it is, man. Not my favorite pick, but uh, not the worst. With the 69th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ethan and the Buccaneers select Kaiser White, safety, West Virginia. So the Buccaneers had a trade early on. Um, I felt it was really in the Buccaneers' favor. I think it was a good move for Ethan to accept the trade. He traded back all the way back to 29 and still got Darius Geis, and I was gushing over how much I loved it. Second round, though, I wasn't feeling it, man. He got uh, Tavares McFadden. I feel like that was a big reach. And then uh, later on at pick 61, which he got from the draft, he went and got Alex Kappa, who I think I have like a fifth round, sixth round, seventh round grade on. Did not like that pick very much. Kaiser White, not quite as much of a, still kind of a, I'm, I'm waiting for Ethan to just really hit one out of the park like he did with Darius Geis. He still has another pick coming up from that trade. Um, obviously, Alex Cap was better than nothing, right? I mean, that was a, you got it in the trade, and you got a good player in round one, so you didn't really lose very much. But I, I'm not feeling, Ki- I got Kaiser White at about 96, so now we're getting out of, you know, he's he's a, you know, technically that's third round, but we're talking kind of fourth roundish type player. Um, 
but it's subjective. You know, Kaiser is another guy you hear a little bit about. Some people love him, some people don't like him. So, again, kind of a good mood. So it's it's. I'm just. I like Ethan, man. He's always here. He's always repping the Bucks. I'm wanting him to do well. I just don't know about these picks, man. But you let me know. Maybe you like him. He obviously likes him. Um, and actually, let me let me throw him a bone real quick because I don't want to pick on the guy. Um, the, the, the big board that I have, as I mentioned, is an aggregator, which means I pull all the different rankings from all the different sites. His ranking overall is not very good, but let me tell you something. NFL.com has him ranked 55th overall. That would make him a great pick. Uh, there's another site that has him ranked 22nd out there. Now, it, it's an outlier, obviously, because overall he's ranked poorly, but in someone's very professional opinion, I'm not going to give away the site necessarily, but you can probably find it, somebody who has a good reputation with mock drafts and whatever, they think he is a first-round talent. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I know anything, and I'm definitely saying there's a lot of debate, but overall, I think it's a reach, but uh, who knows? I guess we'll see. Again, I don't know why I keep saying that. We won't see anything. It's a mock draft. which means it's fake. We won't. But we can find out as the season goes on, right? If, if Kaiser White goes out and tears it up, I'm sure Ethan's going to remember I picked on him, and he'll probably throw it in my face, and I will have deserved that. With the 70th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brett and the 49ers select Bo Scarborough, running back out of Alabama. So it's not a great value at all. Um, it's pretty widely a consensus. I have him ranked like 174th, so I don't even know if that's a... F- I think we're talking like 4th, 5th round-ish. Um, and it's it's a pretty wide consensus. I looked at it, there is one site that has him uh, a good value here, but for the most part, it's it's pretty widely accepted that this is way too early for him. I like what Brett's trying to do. Um, th- he went and got... Uh, I forget who it was. He got some... Derwin James in round one, who I like a lot. Auden Tate in round two was a really good uh, value pick, and it's going to help out uh, their new quarterback. And now you need to get a uh, running back, absolutely. And, I, you know, I, I like Bo, and I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why nobody seems to really like Bo Scarborough. He was really high up. He was kind of in the conversation of, like, top five for a while, I mean, like, real early on. And he just keeps on sliding. I mean, he's just a big, bruising running back. I mean, he's, he's sort of like the Eddie Lacy, and maybe that's what it is. Nobody likes Eddie Lacy anymore, so nobody likes Bo. I know everybody worries about Alabama running backs getting beaten into the ground, but I don't know, man. I mean, you get that big banging, I mean, Leonard Fournette type, obviously not as talented as Fournette, but I, I don't know. I, I guess we'll see. I, I'm being a little biased here. I should just say it's a terrible pick like I do with everybody else. It's a bad value, but I... I'm still waiting for someone to tell me why Bo is so terrible because I, I like him, man. I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased because I like the big bruising running backs more so than the guys that are actually like Alvin Kamara that tear up the league and do really well. I'm still old school, just get a guy that's a, a hammer. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, it's not a good pick, but I like it. So it is what it is. I, I got your back, man. I got you, Brett. With the 71st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Broncos select Hayden Hurst, tight end, South Carolina. I I just love this pick. Um, technically, based on the all-knowing big board, it's a horrible reach. But I looked into it a little bit. I looked at the, the back end of the aggregator. Almost everyone, it's, it's like four out of five. There's a lot of sites that don't even have him listed because it's only like top 50s or whatever. But four out of five think that this is a great value. He's a second round. He's maybe an early third round. But there's two websites that just seem to really hate the guy. So it drug, dragged, it dragged right his his uh, his stock down on the the all-knowing big board. So uh, I, obviously this is a good value. I don't think anybody would necessarily disagree aside from those two sites who think he's horrible. But he, he's he's probably not going to be around to the third round. He's probably going to be gone early to mid second round. But in in terms of this. Not only do I think it's a good value, but, man, we got the Broncos. The Broncos got a brand spanking new quarterback. Then we get him a wide receiver in round two. And now one of my favorite things to do with young and experienced uh, quarterbacks, yes, you need that wide receiver to build chemistry with, but that relief valve, man, that, that guy that you can rely on, the check down, 
these these are the guys that the young guys that are having trouble getting acclimated, right? Everyone's talking Sam Darnold might need a year. He's kind of unpolished or whatever. A good tight end is what they need. Plus, the team just needs a tight end, right? Wide receiver makes sense because you want a young guy that you can build chemistry with in the long run. But, um, you know, they still have Demarius and Emmanuel Sanders, and rumor is they're going to hang on to him. But uh, Dallas, I mean, or excuse me, Hayden Hurst, they, they have – a need at tight end absolutely um hearse is is a, is a big talented dude i i just think it's that's a great pick no question with the 72nd pick in the 2018 nfl draft drayton and the jets select dallas goddard tight end south dakota state so as much as i love the hayden hearse thing i think i like this even more um dallas goddard on the all-knowing big board has is ranked 47th so Obviously, there's a much bigger and broader consensus among all these different websites that Dallas is just a freak. Um, Hayden, there's just kind of a love-hate thing. Some people think he's the top guy. He's a first-round guy. Some people think he's just not very good. Everybody loves Dallas. Um, NFL.com has him compared to Zach Ertz, and I think a lot of that has to do with how he can be used anywhere. You can line him up in the backfield as a running back. He can be an inline tight end. They've they've put him at slot, and they've had him out wide. He is a, a matchup nightmare the Jets same situation I think they got Rosen in round one round two they had two picks they focused primarily on defense they got Mike Hughes and I want to say Sam Hubbard and now they come back and they get help for their um, quarterback you know you you could freak out and say oh man that should have been a priority in round two but to get a guy like Dallas again everything I said about Hayden Hurst for Sam Darnold is true with the Jets here and Dallas Goddard You've got this guy that can do a little bit of everything. He's going to be, man, I, I tell you what, I would, I would pick him up in fantasy football because you've got a young rookie. You have not much of a running game. You have not much by way of wide receivers. I mean, it's kind of like the Eagles in the sense that, you know, obviously not comparable teams, but young quarterback that uh, doesn't have much, but he's got this tight end, which, by the way, Zach Ertz is the comparison. That's just he is he is the offense. So this quarterback and tight end duo, that's the offense. And I feel like that's what the Jets would be in this situation. Um, I don't know if I would pick up Rosen or not, but Dallas Goddard would just be the guy, right? Every touchdown is Dallas Goddard. Every reception, if it's PPR, every reception is going to him. Um, Love the pick. Great pick. Jets are doing a good job. Um, Taking care of that offense with your, you know, the first three rounds, quarterback and, uh, tight end but not neglecting your defense picking up two pretty good guys i think mike hughes is a bit of a reach but that's a debatable thing as well some people think he's going early to mid first so it's, it's uh it kind of a whatever you tend to think on mike hughes i'm not big on him but uh, a lot of people like him with the 73rd pick in the 2018 nfl draft the miami dolphins select royce freeman running back oregon so um i like the pick I, you know, it's it's hard because, you know, I was pretty harsh on the Dolphins in the last video. I think probably every Dolphins fan unsubscribed to my channel after that. But I, I just think it's a reality. You're in a lot of trouble over there. You, you, you're, the team is just kind of falling apart. There's not a lot to love. And, uh, you know, Jarvis Landry and, um, and, and Dominic and Sue are maybe two of the only three people on that entire team that you're excited about it would have been four if you'd have kept Jay Ajayi but you got rid of him you're going to get rid of Jarvis you're going to get rid of Sue you got Cameron Wake for I don't know what another year two years he can't be around all that much longer the one benefit of that though is you just keep taking the best players you don't have to worry about you know some of these other teams are taking great players like the Falcons right great picks but I don't know it's not a big need you know outside of Braden Smith and the guard stuff with this team, you take the best player, and it's an automatic upgrade because who you currently have there is just not very good. Um, so I have Royce at, I want to say, like 63, so I pick 73. It's a decent value. You need a running back. Royce uh, has a lot of love from a lot of people. You know, another guy that's kind of debatable, is he any good or not? But I think it's a good value pick, and you just just keep chicken, chipping away, man. You got a Martinez rank in a tackle. You got Roquan to, to kind of be the field general in that defense and kind of spark what you've got. There's nobody saying that this, these people can't rebound a little bit. Um, you, you get a field general out there that's going to inspire the guys right in the middle of the field, although, you know, not middle linebacker, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and you just you just keep chipping away. You know anything could happen. Hopefully, uh, well, we don't go down that road, but uh, good pick. 
With the 74th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brett and the 49ers are right back on the clock, and they select Marcus Allen, safety, Penn State. So, as much as I loved his previous pick, well, I shouldn't say I loved it. He reached quite a bit, but it, it made sense to get a running back. Um, he got a decent wide receiver in round two. I got to be honest, though, man, I don't like this pick at all. Um, in round one, you already got Derwin James at safety. And when you made that pick, I said, I love Derwin James, but I can tell you right now, 49ers fans are going to hate this because I've done that before. I got a safety for the 49ers, and all they say is, we have good safeties. We don't need a good safety. Don't ever do this again. I looked at it. I was like, yeah, I guess you got pretty good safeties. So you got Derwin James, and I'm thinking, all right, well, he'll probably upgrade, and maybe you get rid of somebody, whatever. This is a, a, a reach. Marcus Allen I have ranked like 105th. I went and looked at it. There's like at best it's a good value but I mean we still have second round early third round guys available I think this is a big reach for a guy that you absolutely don't need you already drafted one too many safeties we're in round three and you've drafted two safeties so I I guess I don't get the strategy I don't really get what it is we think we need safeties for um And if the philosophy is this is just a guy that should have been gone a long time ago, we're going to take the best available, I don't agree with that on on either account. I don't think he's um, a second-round guy that fell too far, and I don't think even in that situation you would take a safety. I I think you just take somebody else, right? You find a guy that's comparable, find another guy that fell too far and draft him. You don't take Marcus Allen. You just, there's no way. With the 75th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ryan and the Raiders select Simi Cobbs, wide receiver, Indiana. Um, It's it's definitely a reach. Um, There's there's maybe two areas, two sites that would agree that this is a good value, but for the most part, I what is he ranked? 197, 139, 130. So fourth, fifth round uh, is where he's sitting. At best, he's a good value. Um, I definitely think it's a reach. Now, in round one, I thought you did pretty solid because it was a big trade and you got a bunch of picks for it, and you still ended up with Denzel Ward, and that was just phenomenal. Um, But, you know, at this point, we're kind of reaching for stuff. And I think the Raiders need enough things that you don't need to be reaching quite like this. Obviously, I don't think he thinks he's reaching. He thinks Simi Cobbs is a good value here. I'm just going to uh, respectfully disagree and uh, not not a huge fan of that particular pick. With the 76th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brandon and the Green Bay Packers select Nick Nelson, cornerback, Wisconsin. So definitely think there's some uh, probably some bias here. It's a Wisconsin player. Packers fans love Wisconsin players. That's probably true of other teams around the league, but uh, I definitely know here we always want Badgers playing for the Packers. It is a reach. Uh, Nick Nelson is, you know, I, I got, I don't even know what, what did I just say? I have him at 123. So he's fourth round, mid fourth round guy. Um, cornerback is a need, but you know, can't be reaching on guys like this. I fourth round cornerbacks. Is he even going to be any good using up a third round pick on him? Um, not my favorite. Hopefully he can come in and tear it up. Um, you know, I, I, he's, he's done well for the Badgers, but, uh, I, I can't love the pick just because it's a need, and this is the Packers, and he's a Badger. I just I got to be more objective than that. 123 is his value overall. Not not great. With the 77th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Damian and the Bengals select Josie Jewell, linebacker, Iowa. I don't hate that at all. Um, it's a decent value. I got him at like 83 or something, which we're on pick 77. So it's basically, it's right where he should be going. Um, I, the Bengals absolutely need linebacker help. Josie Jewell could come in and, and help that immediately. The only problem I have with the Bengals so far is offensive line is the biggest need. We took one swing in the second round, and I think we reached way too far on Brian O'Neill, who's who's a later round prospect. But... I don't think we should be reaching, even for offensive line. And if there's a a second biggest need, it might just be linebacker. I think it's a good pick. I think it's a smart pick. I'm good with it. 
With the 78th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brandon and the Packers are back on the clock. I believe this is part of the Jordy Nelson trade. They didn't put that in the sheet, but it's the only thing that makes sense because it should be the Kansas City Chiefs here, and they traded uh, Jordy to the Kansas City, uh, yeah, to the Chiefs. So the Packers select Hercules Mata'afa, edge rusher, WSU. So um, if, if I'm just going by the all-knowing big board, it's another reach for the Packers. However, I like the pick. Um, I do think it's a good value, and when I went and looked at it, there was no question the plurality of websites agree this is a phenomenal value. There's just two websites that just really dumped on them a lot. And that dragged his uh, value down quite a bit. It's I'll just it's Draft Tech and CBS. Just for some reason hate him. Um, but I, I actually just watched him recently. I'm a little confused because they had him on the defensive line, which is weird. But he's so slippery. He kind of reminds me of like Clay Matthews when they put him at inside linebacker. There was like two years ago they put him at inside linebacker, and he would stand right over the center, just stand there. And then when the ball was snapped, he would just like jump right through, just like scoot. And just go get the quarterback. It was like cheating. Kind of like in, in old school Madden or in Madden Mobile if you just hold down. And they're kind of running but they can't cross the line. And then as soon as you snap it they just go flying over and you get an automatic sack. Because I cheat sometimes. Um, <laughs> that's just, just kind of what, what he reminds me of. And that's what Hercules. I mean, just con- even on the inside he's just he's slippery man. Um, but I, how does that translate to the edge? I'm not entirely sure. But I, I like him a lot. He is a tenacious guy. Uh, Mike Pettin has a really weird and creepy term for edge rushers that he likes that I'm not going to repeat, but basically it's a guy that's just tenacious and that when he gets the quarterback in his sights, it's like he's like a rabid dog, man. He just can't stop, and that's what I see with Hercules. He's way too small to be on the inside, but even against these big guys, he just he won't stop. He's just rabid. So anyways, I like the pick. Hercules Mata'afa to the Packers. Um thanks to uh, Jordy Nelson, who is no longer, sadly, with the team. With the 79th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Jordan and the Cardinals select Duke, edge of four, edge rusher, Wake Forest. So, I like and dislike the pick. I don't think it's a horrible value. In fact, I'm going to read you a couple notes uh, from NFLBigBoard.com, which is why you need to go there, man. This is where you get all this information. That's how you should be making your decisions. That's why I built it, to help you with mock drafts. That's the whole point of that thing. You not only have a list, but if you got an idea, hey, let me click on this guy, go see some notes. Ooh, maybe not a great fit, right? That's that's the goal. This is your mock draft resource all in one place. Um, but anyways, I got him ranked like 90-something. We're basically at pick 80, so... I'm not even going to bother calling that a reach in the third round because there's so much up in the air at this point. Um, Tony Pauline got him at third round, so good value there. Um, He will not be at the combine. Uh, He had surgery to repair a torn labrum, so that may or may not hurt him. I'm not really sure. Depends. I mean, if he was expected to do well, that's absolutely going to hurt him. But here's something else that I found interesting that could make this not such a great pick. Um, it's good and bad. So this is from Joe Marino. He says, he's not an overly twitchy or explosive defensive end, but his power, hand technique, and length with a nuanced approach as a pass rusher makes him very appealing. He also goes on to say that he's, he's a good fit in the 25 to 40 range, which makes him a phenomenal value here. Here's the problem. He says he would be a good fit for a 4-3 team. The Cardinals are a 3-4 team. I don't know how dogmatic he is about that or how accurate he is about that, but it could be a fit issue, right? It's Sometimes it's hard to kind of fit these 4-3 guys into 3-4 type players, right? The Packers had that with Dayton Jones, went and got him in the first round. He's a 4-3 guy, but we can put him at defensive end, and then he sucked, and then we put him at outside linebacker, and then he sucked, and it just didn't work out. But I'm just going to say it's a good pick because, you know, either he's a third-round guy or, you know, he's a 4-3 guy, but he's like a top 30 player, so that still makes him a pretty good value here. So I'm just going to say it's a good pick. With the 80th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Texans select Jamarco Jones tackle Ohio State. So according to the all-knowing big board, decent value, slight reach, but decent value. But I'm just going to tell you right now, great pick. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, great pick. First of all, they need linemen desperately. And their first pick was like 10 picks ago. 
So in a real tough spot. They need a lot of things. They got Quentin Meeks, which I said was a reach, but they need a corner. But, man, you have got a really talented quarterback that is, you know, who knows? Maybe he'll regress. We've seen flashes. He didn't play for all that long. But, man, the flashes we saw were impressive. Um, I think you got to dip your toe in free agency because you don't have I, – I just checked pro football focus. It's a sea of red. It, it's not like, well, it's they're all bad, but, you know, somebody had just had a bad year or, well, so-and-so was on IR when he comes back. There's nothing. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Everybody's terrible. And you've got this young quarterback who's already on the path to, you know, Derek Carrism or Andrew Luckism or whateverism to the point where the guy just keeps getting hurt and his potential is never met. You know, Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford, a, a very talented guy, but just hurt all the time. You got to protect him. I, I it, absolutely have to do it. So, anyways, in terms of this particular pick, Jamarco Jones, um, I got him ranked 91st overall. But let me read you something here. This is according to Lance Zerline. He spoke to one NFC scout who said Ohio State Jamarco Jones is safer than Mike McGlinchey. Now, he doesn't say better. But he does say safer, which is important as well, because when we're talking about safe, we're probably talking about a guy that we can plug in today. His floor is nowhere near where Mike McGlinchey's floor is. He can play, right? We don't have nearly as many fears about what ifs or any of this stuff. His ceiling may not be as high, but you can put Jamarco Jones on this line to protect your quarterback today. No problem. It's going to happen. How good? I don't know, but he can play. Uh, His NFL comparison right now, Michael Orr, another uh, scout that I'll read from NFL.com here. He has holes like they all do, but I think he's safer than Mike McGlinchey. Ohio State's scheme doesn't give you as many pro-style looks as Notre Dame, but I think he'll fit in well as a pro. Again, don't have to worry about transition. You always worry, but um, we're talking about being safe, and we're talking about building an offensive line. Whether or not he's playing tackle or guard or whatever, I don't know, wherever you think he's going to fit, and then keep hammering it with your picks. And, uh, you know, again, free agency, spend what you got to spend, man, because this quarterback has the potential to be the quarterback of your future. He has the potential to be a guy that can bring this team to, uh, you know, you just just look at what some of these young quarterbacks are doing with some of these teams, but it all starts with your ability to protect him. Even if you suck next year because all you did was get offensive linemen and he doesn't really have weapons and you don't really have a defense, I don't care. Protect the most important asset your team has. The important, the most important thing in that entire building is this quarterback. you got to protect him. I like the pick. I'm done talking about it. It's a good pick. With the 81st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brian and the Cowboys select Michael Gallup, wide receiver, Colorado State. I think it's a great pick. I think it's a great value. I got him sitting at number 66 on the board. Um, they got Vita Vea in round one, which I know Cowboys fans love, and it's a you know a big need to get that defensive line help. Um, you got a cornerback in round two, to, despite you know whatever the value or whatever it might be. It's it's something that's going to help your defensive backs, and now you come back and uh, get some wide receiver help for your for your offense, which is still an impressive offense. I mean, you still have a really good wide receiver. You have one of the better running backs in the NFL, and you have a young, talented quarterback. I know he's being overshadowed by all the other young, talented quarterbacks, but um, getting him another weapon is going to be an awesome thing, and it's it's just a good value, right? He's just sitting there. Uh, he should have been gone. Team can use him. I think it's just an easy pick, just good to go. With the 82nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ryan and the Raiders select... MJ Stewart, cornerback, North Carolina. That's what I'm talking about. In their last pick in this round, I said it was a bit of a reach, and I didn't care for it very much, but this is awesome. I got him ranked 63rd, I think, which makes him a late second round value. Um, You need some help on the defensive backfield, and this is part of that round one trade. So you trade it out of a pretty early spot, and you end up getting Darius Geis, MJ Stewart at a phenomenal value, and you have a 2019 fourth waiting for you next year. Um, I'm happy with it, man. It's tough to give up those early spots, and who knows who you would have ended up with. But to get Geis and MJ Stewart out of that, I'm I would be surprised if you end up hating that later on. I really would. Great pick. With the 83rd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Michael and the Ravens select Desmond Harrison, offensive tackle, West Georgia. So the all-knowing big board has Mr. Desmond Harrison at 188. That would make this a massive reach. 
Um, I think the Ravens need quite a few things, so reaching on anything is silly. Uh, if you really want to get an offensive tackle, I think you can get better ones than this that are still available. Um, there is one site that I was able to find that has him at a decent value here. Maybe that was the resource he was using, or maybe he just likes Desmond Harrison. I don't really know exactly uh, why this was the selection, but um, for me, it's uh, no so good. With the 84th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ryan and the Chargers select Uchina Nuosu, edge rusher, USC. Um, so it, I think it's a great value. The biggest question, obviously, though, is what in the world are you going to do with this guy? Um, I mean, it's 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 a seriously good value. I, I mean, we're talking like second round, late second round value. So maybe he's just sort of that next level talent. Maybe he's just on that that higher playing field, right? So to the point where he's the only guy on that tier, so it makes sense. You don't want to pass up on him. You can't pass up on that kind of talent. It's possible that he's he's just, that's just what the situation is. But you got to know the fans are going to hate it because this dude's just going to sit on the bench. Unless there's an injury, maybe you in a rotational situation, but maybe the best pass rushing duo is already on this team. Um, so I get it from a value standpoint. I get it from a best player available standpoint. Potentially, I don't really know. I don't have a, an actual big board crossing people off to see who I think is the best. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just, it's that's the situation. Great value. Very important position. Uh, I understand from the standpoint of you can't have too many edge rushers, especially if you just have two. I don't know. Maybe they have depth already, but if you don't have depth, it definitely makes sense. right? It's one of those things where somebody goes out for a couple plays and you get this guy coming in, and he comes in and he just tears it up. Um, it's it, it, Smart, but everyone's going to hate it. We'll leave it at that. With the 85th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Panthers select... Justin Reed, safety, Stanford. I love the pick, man. Uh, phenomenal value. I got him ranked 63rd on the big board. Should have been gone a long time ago. Um, he traded out of the first and went just crazy making those picks count in the in the uh, second round. Went and got Christian Kirk, got uh, Durant Armstrong, and then got Frank Ragnow at center. Just making all those picks count. He's got two additional trades, or excuse me, two diff two picks in this round, and he starts off swinging, getting another, basically a fourth second round pick in Justin Reed. It's a position of need. Um, I, just a lot of upgrades, a lot of great moves by the Panthers here, and they got another one coming up. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving what they're doing. With the 86th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs for the first time were making their selection after they traded for Jordy Nelson. And with that, the Chiefs will select Tony Brown, cornerback, Alabama. So here's what I like. I like that they got Jordy. <laughs> so they got Mahomes, right, talented guy. They got Travis Kelsey. They got Tariq Hill. And now they got Jordy, who's got that deep speed, you know, white light lightning on your team now. Here's what I don't like so much. Um, Tony Brown. Tony Brown is going probably not even to be drafted. Um, I have him ranked, I think, like 370-something, which is well beyond when the draft will be over. I went to go check NFL.com to see maybe they think something special about him. We'll see. He is dead last on their entire list of corners and is the only one that they didn't even bother to give a grade to. Their grade scale only goes down to 5. They gave a couple guys like 4.8s, and then with Tony Brown, they're like, eh, it's not even worth it, man. Don't even, don't even give the guy a grade. Um, so... I don't know what Aaron is trying to do here with the Chiefs. I don't know if they're just big Alabama fans. They're looking, they're like, oh, cornerback, Alabama. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe they typed the wrong name. I, I don't know what the strategy is here. Uh, maybe a big Alabama fan who just thinks anybody that uh, is on the team is a freak. I, I don't know. I would like to find out, Aaron, when you listen to this. If you want to shoot me a message on Facebook, let me know what in the world you are thinking drafting Tony Brown in the third round. Um, it's your first pick, man. It's got to be a good one. This is it. This is the only pick you've made. It's the third round already. Everybody else is stacking pieces. The Panthers have made like 19 picks. They're basically on their way to the Super Bowl, and you pick a guy that's an undrafted guy in the third round. Come on, man. Come on. 
With the 87th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, David and the Rams select Cameron Kelly, cornerback, SDSU. So it's it's a pretty big reach. This is a, you know, it's a big reach. I think this is the second pick for the Rams, and they took Billy Price in the first round, which I think is also quite a bit of a reach. So, I, you know, the, the cool thing about something like this is you kind of get a feel for the the uh, the GMs. I, I kind of like it, right? You, you, you got the guys that are super frugal. They'll trade away anything for more picks, and then they start stacking picks. You got guys that just like to trade. Like, I'll, I'll give you Jordy, and I'll give you Rodgers, and I'll give you um, – Everybody, hey, you want my coach? <laughs> I'll give you my coach. Just give me the picks, man. I just want to trade up and get those picks. And then you got guys who are just like, well, this is the position I want, so I'm just going to pick a player for that position. And I think that's what we got here. Um, David says this is what we need. Give me a list of these players. All right, this guy works, and that's what we're going to plug in here. So he's a position guy. Who's the best one at this position? I don't even think Cameron Kelly is the best. I don't. I don't know. I'd have to go at the list and put it in an order of all the best corners and cross. I'm not doing that. But I'm confident in the fact that there are several cornerbacks better than Cameron Kelly. Um, small school kind of guy. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, thinking it's not going to be too great. Not my favorite. Definitely not as bad as the Chiefs pick. Still a bit of a reach though. With the 88th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Panthers back on the clock select Lorenzo Carter, linebacker, Georgia. I love the pick. Uh, It's another great value. I know you got Luke Keekley and the guys next to him aren't horrible, but definitely some potential there, and it would not hurt at all if you can find a guy that's a good enough value, like Lorenzo Carter, to come in and compete. Uh, it's going to help your team quite a bit. I, I have some notes here on NFLBigBoard.com. Let's check it out. Tony Pauline, here's what he had to say. Carter lacks the quickness of Smith. He's talking about Roquan Smith. He's comparing the two. He lacks the quickness of Smith, but is a better pass rusher, plays with more force, and is also effective in space. His 40 time at the Combine, specifically his 10-yard split, will be closely watched as Carter, Carter takes a while to get going and has more build-up speed compared to Smith, who is just downright explosive. So we got, we got some question marks about his speed and his ability to get going, but in some respects, he is better than Roquan Smith. He's a great value here. Um... NFL.com compares him to Niall Diggs, says he's a second or third round prospect. Uh, No question, this is a very good value and it's a very good pick. Chris and them Panthers, man, I'm telling you, they're killing it in this draft so far. With the 89th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Dylan and the Titans select James Daniels, center, Iowa. Flippin' love that pick, man. James Daniels um, on the all-knowing big board is ranked like 57th way 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 too far and that is even maybe a little low it's i mean it's almost becoming a consensus he's better than billy price he came out of nowhere he is flying up the boards he is right there with billy price and i would say about half the time when i hear the two compared um half of them like um james daniels better than billy price either way the guy is phenomenal um you know, in terms of need, I mentioned before, I think the Titans are a team where they have they don't have a lot of horrible players, but they don't have a lot of elite players. They've got a lot of guys where you could you can work with what you got, but you could also probably upgrade it. So is it a dire need? No. It's also the second time that they've hit on offensive line. They got Will Hernandez in round one. So definitely seems to be an emphasis here on uh, the offensive line, or maybe just this guy should have been gone a long time ago. I'm definitely going to take him. Either way, this offensive line should be much improved. Let me just read really quickly here a little note by Joe Marino. He has him as one of three centers that are in the top 50. The other two are Billy Price and Frank Ragnow. But here's what he had to say about James Daniels. For teams that feature a zone run scheme and need a center, Daniels has a perfect skill set. His movement skills, nimble feet, refined technique, and ability to work his hips through contact are outstanding. He reaches places on the field unheard of for an interior offensive lineman. His snap-to-step quickness is exceptional. So the guy is ultra-athletic for a center. Um, Just people are really starting to fall in love with this guy. He may be the best available player. Again, I don't know. I'm not keeping perfect tabs on all this stuff. But... um, Actually, the guy right above him, who was uh, relatively on I'll be interested to see who takes him, because you don't hear his name very often. Anyways, James Daniels, just out of the park. That was 
Phenomenal pick. Phenomenal. With the 90th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Deck and the Falcons select Rashad Penny, running back, SDSU. Man, I, I like this. You know, I, I every time he picks, I say this, but I, I hated when he traded away their running back to move all the way up to the front. But he actually got a uh, couple picks out of that. He got... Um, Trying to be quick here. Why, why can't I find? Oh, he moved, yeah, he moved up to number two. So he got Minka Fitzpatrick, but then he went back and he got pff, what was the other one? The Falcons, uh, Taven Bryan, which was phenomenal, right? So then he waits until his second pick of the third round and he gets his replacement in Rashad Penny, and I think it's a solid replacement, right? He's not necessarily a home run hitter. He's not going to be that third round. He's he's a volume back. He's going to be sort of your every down back. You held on to your change of pace back, and um, so I don't. I mean, and it's a good value. I got him ranked 89th. This is pick 90, so he's going right where he needs to go. Uh, Deck could have freaked out and said, "I want to get my replacement earlier on when the Falcons picked." Um, but he didn't. He waited until right here, and he gets Rashad Penny. It's a fantastic pick, a fantastic fit. Um, and, uh, and, you know, again, instead of freaking out and getting a running back here, he gets Braden Smith. So Taven Bryan is a phenomenal value. Braden Smith is a phenomenal value. And you get your replacement, rated a good value. Man, it almost seems like this guy knows what he's doing, man. This is This is crazy. It's almost like he knows the future and is, is planning this out perfectly because this is... This is impressive for just kind of dumb luck to be able to fall into all this. Um, I think he's doing a phenomenal job, a really good job of drafting. And, um, again, he got Minka Fitzpatrick <laughs> to get rid of, to get rid of, uh, that to, to move up, to get rid of uh, running back. So just want to reiterate that, that that's really impressive. Now, it's all going to come down to how good are these guys. Can you find a place for Minka Fitzpatrick? And uh, how good is Rashad Penny? Because if he's a bust you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But if this guy can come in and be productive every down back, especially now that you got your guard, and, um, you know, to help out your run game and your pass game, I don't know, man, we're rolling the dice, but I, I got your back. I like this. With the 91st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Dante Pettis, wide receiver, Washington. So I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's... um. It's a decent value. I think I got him ranked like 98th, so it's pretty negligible here at 91, the difference between the two. I'm definitely not going to call it a reach. Um, the only question, I guess, is why. Um, you know, let, let's say we got a pool of about 10 people that are a decent value. I wonder why we choose a wide receiver. Um, not that you don't need it. You know, you got Thomas, but you could use some more. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't think he's a slot guy. I don't know, but I don't think he is. That would be somewhat beneficial. But, I mean, we could do offensive line. We could do tight end. You already got an edge rusher, which is cool, but we could probably do linebacker. We could do safety, slot corner. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's I guess it's all right. I don't. Again, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's okay. Hopefully he comes in and uh, can continue. You got Drew Brees back, and, you, you know, this, this team's defense is stepping up. And I do think it's important to make sure that this offense doesn't erode. Obviously, Alvin Kamara is on your team now. Um, if we can keep this defense rolling, keep it improving, and keep this offense going at a high level, which another good wide receiver could do, um, from that standpoint, I guess I could see this panning out. But um, I, I, I could probably confidently say this would not have been my pick, but I don't hate it. With the 92nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, David and the Steelers select Jeff Holland, linebacker Auburn. So this is the guy I was talking about when James Daniels got picked and I said I bet he's the best player available and I said oh wait the guy above him hasn't been picked. Jeff Holland is one spot above him. Um, he is ranked in the like 53 so a second round pick. Just I mean, it, it doesn't even matter necessarily if it's a need when you get a guy that is this crazy. Um, he should have been gone a long time ago. I mean if I'm one of these guys Need or not, I'm looking at it saying we got to trade up and try to get this guy because the value is so crazy right now. But uh, good on David for being on top of that, um, recognizing the value. Linebacker is a need, so you know it's possible he just kind of dumb luck. He said, oh, linebacker Jeff is probably the best available." But um, I'm, I'm going to give him the credit and say that he went out and found that that diamond in the rough. He found that guy that is clearly the best 
uh, on the on the board, and it is a position to need. So phenomenal pick by the Steelers and by David here. With the 93rd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, we have our first and only trade of this round, and it's a little bit of a goofy one. So uh, stay with me for a second. This is the Jaguars who are picking. However, in round one. They traded away something with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and as a result, Tampa Bay is sitting in this spot. So this should be Tampa Bay's selection. However, the trade came from the Chargers to move up into pick 93, and they're trading away Jason Verrett. So I looked into it a little bit. It's sort of interesting. Um, obviously, the Chargers do not necessarily... I shouldn't say they don't need him because you never know with injury or whatever else could happen. Uh, but from their standpoint, they have three just freakishly good cornerbacks. Jason Verrett has some value because he's young and he had two amazing uh, seasons, but his last two seasons have been terrible. I don't know why. Not really a Chargers fan, haven't been following along. But it's definitely easy to see why a team like Tampa Bay would look at it and say, you know what, we, he's got talent. He can play, and we, we might be able to get something out of him. So Tampa Bay takes it. They, they take Jason Verrett. Um, Chargers offload him. They're they're saying, you know, we're we're done. We two years of playing like garbage. We have corners. You know, maybe we'll invest somewhere else for depth. But we're we're ready to move on. Anyways, the Chargers select, and Ryan is a GM. Riley Ferguson, quarterback out of Memphis. So I do not like that pick. It makes sense to trade up because you feel like you have a quarterback and you really like him. And this is the kind of stuff that can happen with quarterbacks. I don't like it because according to the all-knowing big board, it's a horrible value. But if somebody disagrees and has Riley Ferguson much higher, this is the kind of stuff that a team would do. And with that said, I went and looked it up. There is one team that has him ranked, or one site that has him ranked 98th overall, which would make him a perfect value for right here. Chargers could be in that same line saying, you know, he's a good value here. He made it to here. Let's just go get him, man. We already said we were going to use him as a trade chip. We can just pull the trigger right now. They pick up the phone. Somebody's ready to do business. Let's do business. But I, I went ahead and did the math anyways, and I counted it out. I have four quarterbacks that are better than this. And I don't think any of them are really a good value, right? The next best quarterback is probably a good value when the Chargers are picking next. He is is ranked 290th on the big board here. So um, the all-knowing big board does not like this very much at all. Um, as a result, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, again, I'm not a scout, so I kind of rely on what everybody else is saying. I have my own opinions. But I don't, and you shouldn't put as much stock into it as these people that do this for a living, which is what the all-knowing big board references, and according to that, really, really poor pick. But who knows? Who knows, right? Some people like them. There is one site that has them as a good value here, and it's one of those wait-and-see things, right? Again, Ryan's the GM. He loves Riley Ferguson. He has a trade chip. He pulled the trigger. It is what it is, man. And you got time to develop them, right? You've got a starting quarterback. Basically, this is a developmental guy, so we'll see. See how it goes. With the 94th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Bradley Bozeman, center, Alabama. I think it's a real good pick. Um, that's Reagan. I don't know if I said that. Reagan is the GM with the Vikings. Bradley Bozeman. I think it's a real good pick. It's a good value. I got him ranked like 84th-ish, so um, uh, sitting in a good spot here to take him. It's an offensive line guy that they need. Um, in the first round, they got Orlando Brown. Phenomenal value for him at the end of the first round. Swinging again at offensive line. The only critique would be that you have Pat Elfline, who was not good, but he was a rookie. So what this tells me, at least in terms of what Reagan's thinking, is I don't have a lot of faith in Elfline. Now I'm going to tell the media, and I'm going to tell Elfline, and I'm going to tell everybody else that Elfline is our center. This is just about taking good players. He was the best player available, and we're going to bring him in, and he's going to help compete, and he's going to help raise the uh, the the talent level of our team. That's the kind of BS political speak that you're going to put, you know, a little spin on this. Fact of the matter is, we're going to bring him in with the hope and expectation that he's able to compete, and that at the end of this, whether it's Elfline or Bozeman or whoever, we have a phenomenal starting center. You also have to ask the question: Can either of these guys play guard? Usually, center and guard. Um, somewhat interchangeable right there's some capability i don't know and i don't remember and i don't feel like spending the time looking it up but if elfline or bozeman have the potential to play guard um you know 
Again, we're bringing guys in to compete, and we have Orlando Brown to cover the tackle spot. We're going to get this fixed. We're, we're a Super Bowl caliber team, maybe the best defense in the NFL, one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. I think, personally, I think underrated. Great quarterback, regardless of who we keep. we got a great rookie running back, and we're, we're just going to figure this offensive line out. And if, if you think you know taking centers two years in a row is stupid, I don't really care. Because we're going to bring in players, we're going to get this figured out, we're going to get it working, and we're going to protect our quarterback, we're going to get the run game going, and we're going right back uh, for another shot at the Super Bowl. And that's just my mentality as a, as a GM and as a as a personnel person for the Vikings. So I like the pick, I think it's a real good pick. With the 95th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Marcel Frazier, edge rusher, Missouri. So I think this is a pretty big reach, I know some people like him. Um, I have him ranked 253rd. NFL.com has him as a fourth or fifth round prospect. Um, 4-3 end, so decent fit. Definitely could use the help on the edge. Um, you know, on the, uh, the opposite side of Flowers, I guess. I just I'm not a big fan of the pick overall. I just I think we're reaching. I think there's a, a pool of players that are a good value here. I think the Patriots have enough needs, whether it be linebacker. It could be edge. I think there's better edge guys. Um, you know, whatever. But I, I just, I'm not a big fan of it. Again, could pan out. All that you need is for this guy to come in and play like a third-round prospect, and it's a good pick. But uh, in terms of where things stand now, I think we're reaching. So not my favorite. Finally, with the 96th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Bryson and the Bills select Mason Cole, center, Michigan. So I, I like it and I don't. According to the big board, it's a bit of a reach. Um, but it, it's very subjective, right? You have some people that really like him, some people that don't. I, I've, I have him ranked as high as 49th, which would make this just an absolutely freakishly good pick. Um, the Bills definitely have a need there because there was a vacancy in that spot, I believe. I think somebody was it. Was that the guy that had the injury that had to retire? I don't know, but they they have a vacancy there. They need to fill it. And uh, Mason Cole has has every bit of potential to come in and be just a freakish guy. I, I personally, just based on what I've been hearing, I'm kind of surprised how low he's ranked on the all-knowing big board. Um, so I, for that reason, I tend to like it. Um, I like what the Bills are doing here. Uh, they've had a lot of good picks. They've had a lot of good uh, what you call it, but. Um, you know, again, got, got to stick with the system, so I think it's a bit of a reach, but I don't think they're going to be upset about it. I think Mason Cole is going to come in, he's going to start, and he's going to be all right. So that's it, folks. That is all there is to it. The the mighty big board and the pack daddy have officially spoken. The Facebook group, you got to get in there, man. That's where all the fun's happening. They're doing a mock draft right now. You got to get in, be a part of it. These things are going to be regular. I'm going to get you on there. Um, and uh, be sure to check out uh, NFLBigBoard.com. I'm working hard. There's a lot of uh, things that still need to be put in place. I'm doing this. I'm doing Packers stuff. So I'm, I'm doing my best, but I'm telling you, I want that to be your number one resource for mock drafts and everything else. If you want to know about a prospect, if you want to know where they're ranked, if you want to know some details about them, if you want to know hey, whatever, right, this is where you're going to go. It's got team information, where do the teams pick, compensatory picks, mock drafts you know again a lot of that is missing but i'm working on it it's just it's a one-stop shop man that's what it is you got to check it out uh work in progress please give me your feedback nflbigboard.com uh, otherwise enjoy your weekend i will be back again and again and again because i just don't stop <laughs>